United. League leaders Manchester United visiting the bank stadium. A point clear of Arsenal in the league table. And a win this afternoon would take them four points clear of the Gunners, who don't feature until tomorrow. What a great position that would put Casey Stoney's side in. Well, for the team news then, Aston Villa makes six changes from what was a slightly rotated team that faced Durham in the Conti Cup last month. The five that retain their place in the side are Natalie Hay, Caroline Seams, goal scorer that night, Emma Follis, Anita Asante, who was nominated for Women's Super League November Player of the Month recently, and Sophie Hayward, who makes her first start for Aston Villa in the Barclays FA Women's Super League. As for Manchester United, Kirsty Hansen and Jess Sigsworth pick up Lake Knox. They are subsequently unavailable, whilst Kristen Press is out through illness. It's four changes from the side that beat rival City on penalties in the Conti Cup. Ella Toon and Hayley Ladd return, as does Mary Earps between the sticks. And the Reds are also boosted by the availability of Kirsty Smith, the fullback featured for Scotland during the recent international break, and goes straight into the side for her first Barclays FA Women's Super League start in two months. Well, important to mention as well, as you may have recognised, there are no fans this afternoon at the Bank Stadium. That's with Birmingham in Tier 3. Uh, Manchester are in Tier 3 too, but their next home game is against Bristol City on December the 20th, and the next government review of regional restrictions is before that date, so there is a possibility that United fans may return for that game. As the two captains do the coin toss in front of referee Abigail Byrne, Melly Turner and Marissa Ewers. Well, that's for Aston Villa. They're looking to avoid becoming the first side in the Women's Super League to lose their first four home games without scoring. It's only their second game at the Bank Stadium in the league, the first of which they lost 6 0 to Everton. And they'll be desperate to avoid a repeat of that. And to start climbing the table as well. One win in the Women's Super League so far this season for Gemma Davis's side coming against Brighton. And they will kick us off this afternoon in the Claret and Blue, united in their chain strip of black and white. As the players and officials take the knee for Black Lives Matter, showing solidarity in all forms of racial abuse. And it's Aston Villa who get us underway. One of three sides yet to pick up any points at home this season. Alongside West Ham and Birmingham. And they face a very informed Manchester United side this afternoon. In the sunshine at the Bank Stadium. Early touch for Kirsty Smith back in the side. That's a good ball as well to find Tobin Heath. Lauren James pulls back. Heath still in possession. This is Lauren James. Takes the shot on, it's only just wide of Lisa Weiss's post. James, who makes only her second start of the season, her first in the Women's Super League this campaign. Almost making her mark very early on. Managed nine league goals, uh, nine goals in all competitions last season, six in the league. She'll be looking to hit those heights again this season, but with much more competition up front. It's a real opportunity for her this afternoon with press out through illness. Here she is again, James, seeing a lot of the ball early on. Kept possession well. Soon kept possession well, as does Ona Badia. A 
Manchester United, they've won their last four league games on the road, unbeaten in the Women's Super League for 11 games going back to January. Their only defeat in 2020 in the Barclays FA Women's Super League was their very first game of the calendar year, a 1-0 defeat to Bristol City, who they face on their last game of the calendar year. Here's Lauren James. Draws so many players in, creating space for her teammates. Well won back by Gronen. Aston Villa, though, in decent form as well. In general, including the penalty shootout win over Durham, they've won four of the last five in all competitions. Although three of those coming in the Conti Cup against championship opposition. Here's Hales. Clever ball to find seams. There's a nice flick as well from Ramona Petzelberger. Didn't feature in that game against Durham, but has featured in every single Women's Super League game so far this season. And was unlucky with that flick. Seems under pressure. Does well to turn Toon. Gave possession away to Lab, though. This is Gronen. Now Badger. Still in possession, the Spaniard. Toon finds Galton, who can't quite evade the offside flag. Hales penalised. Gronen on the floor. Her 20th Women's Super League appearance for Manchester United this afternoon. Jackie Gronen also made 20 Women's Super League appearances during her time at Chelsea in her last spell in England. Still yet to score for the Reds in her second season. Comes back onto her feet by Millie Turner. Amy Turner finds Smith. Heath dispossessed, Manchester United throw. This is Gronen. Good one touch pass that from Lauren James to release Goldson. Looking to square it, and it was almost an own goal. Natalie Hay facing her own goal. Just about putting it over the crossbar. In the right place to deal with it. And a real concern for Manchester United here because. Jackie Gronin's gone down again. And for United, who, as I mentioned earlier, had Sigsworth and Hansen pick up late knocks. Alessio Russo is out long term, as is Martha Harris. They can't really afford to have too many more injuries. Especially someone who's featured in every single league game so far this season, Jackie Gronin. Helped off the pitch by the medical team.
Corner for United in the West Midlands sunshine. And towards the near post, and the header diverted by Amy Turner and wide. Eighth successive start for Amy Turner. Manchester United pressing high as they so often do. Lad back to Smith. He's been paying dividends as well for Casey Stoney's side this season. Five of Manchester United's Women's Super League goals have come from winning possession in their attacking third, two more than any other side. That's how they got back into the game against Manchester City a few weeks ago when they drew 2-2. Pressed high, won the ball, and then, of course, that incredible strike from Tobin Heath, half the deficit that day. Heath into Toon. Badger comes away with the ball. Finds Smith in a bit of space. Now Tobin Heath. Well read by Anita Asante. Zasta Villa try and get their front players involved, but Manchester United win it back again. A little bit more space now for Hales. Good football this from Aston Villa as well. Franklin Frechur on the stretch, unable to keep it. Under pressure from Galton. But Gemma Davis will be pleased with how confident her side are playing in possession. She said after the game against Durham that she's starting to see more personality with her team. And we saw it then again. And they fire forward again. Follis, that's clever. Now Ewers, real opportunity this for Aston Villa. Marissa Ewers takes the shot on. It's wide. But Manchester United, the architects of their own downfall there. Millie Turner giving away possession. And they're being forced into their first change as well. Jackie Gronan unable to re-enter the pitch. And she's replaced by Lucy Staniforth. A sixth substitute appearance of the season in the league for Lucy Staniforth, signed from Birmingham in the summer. Thrown forward by Badia. Little one two with James. Now standing fourth. As Toon plays across to Kirsty Smith, just tucking in from right back to provide an option for her side. Now Heath. Allowed to foray forward. Loose pass though to standing fourth. And United, not for the first time, giving away possession cheaply. Follis does the same, mind you. And Hayley Ladd wins it back. Bit of a scrappy start to this game. Strong challenge from Follis on Badia. Equally strong tackle on Staniforth. This one, though, penalised. Marissa Yu is the guilty party. Ona Badger in space. James makes the overlapping run. Badger trying to use her as a decoy, but gets it back again. Uh, efforts deflected. This is Tobin Heath once more. Now Toon. Allowed to drive forward. Ella Toon 
Tipped over by Vice. Needed dealing with that. United's top scorer in all competitions this season. Trying her luck from distance and not too far away. But the German goalkeeper, Lisa Weiss, equal to it. Fifth successive league start for Weiss. Rogers started the opening game against Manchester City, but Weiss has done so every league game since. And pulled off some strong saves too. Signed from Leon in the summer. Manchester United corner. Heath once again to send it in. It's short though to Toon. One off the training ground, but Toon couldn't make contact. On a Badger with time on the ball here. To fire it into Toon. Looks cross field. Goldson was the target. And put seams under pressure, too much pressure for referee Abigail Burns liking. And it's a Villa free kick. Interesting to note that very early on, Manchester United have swapped their wingers over too to try and get the better out of both Goldson and Heath in these early stages. Aston Villa defending pretty well so far. Not afraid to change things up, Casey Stoney, who was nominated for November Women's Super League Manager of the Month. James dropping deep. Shows good feet as well to get away from Ewers. The shot, though, wayward. But showing plenty of confidence, Lauren James, as ever, in possession. Smith into James, first-time effort. Wide again. But Manchester United being allowed a little bit more time on the ball in the final third. That time because Villa gave it away. Couldn't quite regroup and get back into shape quick enough. Smith up to two and good flick on. Staniforth round the corner to James. And the 19-year-old finds Smith. In came Seams with the interception, running down a bit of a cul-de-sac, but looks to try and find Hales. Amy Turner went through the back, Hales keeps possession. And it's Manchester United to win a throw off of Seams via Haley Ladd. Two in turns, lovely flick to look for Staniforth. In came Petzelberger, who won her side a free kick. Stop start this game, which Aston Villa won't mind. It's disrupting Manchester United's rhythm. Better chances, though, falling the way of the visitors. Lauren James has had a couple of decent early opportunities. Had a tune stung the palms of Vice. Seems into Hayward. Turned well, Sophie Hayward. Excellent football again from Aston Villa. Hayward's cross, Petzelberger collects. Now Follis pokes it wide to Franklin Freitschur. Digs out a decent cross and headed away by Millie Turner. Needed dealing with. And it's Staniforth who gets it further away from danger. But again, Aston Villa showing that 
They can cause Manchester United problems this afternoon. Really good football again between Seams and Hayward. Under pressure here, though, and Dow and did really well to keep it away from Heath. It's a United throw, but it could have been a lot worse. As Hales gets back to make the challenge, this is Petzelberger. Not much support for Ewers, but clips it over the top looking for Hales. Manchester United can't quite believe that's not their throw. He's dispossessed by Petzelberger. This one is a Manchester United throw. Bad year assessing our options and throws longer for James. <laughs> Possession getting a bit stuck down this near side. Good passages of play from both teams at times in this game, but I'm sure both managers will want their side to use the width a bit better as Goldson's cross comes to no avail. The ball had gone out of play anyway. I'm sure Casey Stoney would want her side to be a little bit more expansive in possession. also swapped Goldson and Heath back over to their more natural left and right side respectively as Aston Villa come forward Hayward looking for seams or blocked by Smith it's still Sophie Hayward though Caroline seams again eventually the cross comes in but Erps will collect Turner's ball out of play. Badger gets Toon on the run. Skips away from Franklin Freitur and away from Ewers. The cross is diverted to Staniforth and Petzelberger stayed strong. Opportunity here though for Toon. Over the bar.
Lisa Weiss this time pushing everyone forward. Deciding it's not worth potentially giving away possession to United's high press. Sante looking for seams. Who wins that side of throw? Caroline seems very much making that left back role her own. The only game she hasn't started, the league game she hasn't started this season, was the 6 0 loss to Everton as James's cross is held by Lisa Weiss and needed to be as well. Goldson and Toome were queuing up. Turner comes away with the ball. There she is again, the defender. Now two. A little bit too aggressive that time from the United midfielder, Ella Toon. Her second league goal of the season. <laughs> and Aston Villa, who had been pretty resolute up to that point, will be disappointed to concede in the way they did. It's all about their reaction. They've given away possession again here with Vice. It's one back by Endow. Rather fortunately for the home side. This was their problem against Everton. It took a while for Everton to break the deadlock, but once they did, they found another two goals within seven minutes. They can't let that happen again. Here's Natalie Hay. Picked up by Asante. Hay again. That's a better ball out wide to find Haywood. Just not quite on the same wavelength that time between Ewers and Hales. Casey Stoney and Manchester United, it was all about getting that first goal. Now they can settle a little bit, not pressure themselves into forcing anything. Although they'll know that Aston Villa have looked threatening when they've come forward too. Smith joins in the attack. Lisa Weiss holds on. Emma Follis. Lost out. This is Ella Toon. Now standing forth. Looking for James. It ricocheted towards Toon. Kept out by Weiss. They get so many bodies forward, Manchester United, so quickly.
seems, coming in with the interception. Just ahead of Tobin Heath. This is Haywood for Aston Villa. Now Asante. Seems looks over the top and Hales could be away here. It's an opportunity for Aston Villa and Shania Hales. Kept out by Mary Earps. And Amy Turner is first onto the loose ball. There's a really well-timed pass over the Manchester United back four. Perfectly weighted for Shania Hales. The angle was slightly against her, forced away from goal slightly. Up, uh, stayed strong. finds Follis looking for Hales who's managed to get there ahead of Millie Turner forced towards the byline though Follis in support and came standing forth well read from the Manchester United midfielder Natalie Hay in possession. Well, as I'm sure you've seen, it's Rainbow Laces weekend, and Natalie Hay is an ambassador for Villa and Proud and LGBTQ and Allies Supporters Network. Rainbow Laces is the campaign designed to raise awareness and support the Stonewall Rainbow Laces campaign and the LGBT community. There, Galton does well, gets there ahead of Follis. A cross goes in Dow, but Galton gets the cross in. It's over Tobin Heath. A couple of times where Manchester United have got down that left-hand side into a good crossing opportunity, but it's been hit too hard or had too much flight on it. Just that final ball lacking at times from Casey Stoney's side. The one time it was pinpoint, they found Golton who scored. Chance to fire forward again here, though, as Ladd finds James is offside. Did look to be there, the United forward. <laughs> Playing with a lot of character, though, Manchester United this afternoon, and so they should. Currently top of the league, of course. That's. Domestically unbeaten, it's also having played Chelsea, Arsenal and Manchester City already this season. An early pick out to fine tune, Vice off our line gathers. Aston Villa's defence just switched off there and... Vice barking at a defensive line to switch on. Galton steals it from Ewers, in came Franklin Freitschur. And down goes back to Vice, who has to rush out of her goal. 
Well, they got out of the press that time, Aston Villa. And when they do, you have to applaud it, but... Just wonder whether sometimes they do overplay. They have their principles, though. They like to play possession. They like to play out of the back. And when they do it successfully, they can create chances, as we've seen this afternoon. Here's Follis. Attempted little one-two between herself and Franklin Freitur and came and down with the challenge. Follis battling away with Badger. Plenty of time for Millie Turner, across to Amy Turner. Badger looking to get forward and Dow trying to... Well, see it out of play, but turned and then one outside a free kick, really composed play that from the centre half. And like Caroline Seams, the only league game she didn't start as well was that 6-0 loss to Everton 2. Other than that game, the defence has been pretty much unchanged. From Gemma Davis, and to good effect too. Another chance for Leah Galton to potentially deliver from out wide. James in support. James might go herself. Blocked by Endow, now Staniforth. Clever feet from Toon, Staniforth's effort, comfortable for Vice. Good turn that from Ewers, or Hayward rather. Ailey Ladd being called over by Abigail Byrne. Slightly cynical from Hayley Ladd, but not enough to receive a yellow card. Hayes pass looking for Follis and not far away from finding her. Alert play though from Erbs who can release Badger. Now Galton. On a bad year again. Once more, though, Lauren James offside. possession in came Petzelberger though and this is Shania Hales and Itra Sante allowed to get forward Hayward just about couldn't find seams on the stretch ball ricochets to Ewers as well to beat Staniforth to it Former Birmingham City teammates, Ewers and Staniforth. Oh, Ewers looking wide that time, gave away possession to Badia. Smart turn from Goldson as both Ewers and Petzelberger hit the deck. Unfortunately, though, for Goldson, the offside flag was raised against her. Billy 
Adia. Franklin Freitcher has to force it out of play. Lose pass from Kirsty Smith. Unable to get Tubin Heath involved. That's a nice flick from Hayward. And once again, Villa down that left hand side, so composed in possession. This is Ramona Petzelberger. Hales up ahead of her. Follis making the run to the right. It's Shania Hales. Couldn't keep her shot down. Once again, Aston Villa's principles of playing out of the back, paying off. It gave Ramona Petzelberger a lot of space in midfield once they evaded the Manchester United press. Hayley Ladd with space, tries to thread it through, well read by Seams. Now Hales. Follis making the run out wide once more. Hales twisting and turning, waiting for options. Well trucked by Lauren James. Excellent work rate that between James and, and Hales in possession. It's not often that you see Two strikers challenge each other in the centre of the park. Stand of fourth, looking for James, overhit that time. and wins the header, but it's space now for Ona Badia. Santos' challenge penalised by Abigail Byrne. Tobin Heath unable to bring the ball under her spell. Petzelberger into Ewers. Space for Alicia and Dow, now Follis. Aston Villa playing with a bit more confidence here. Just as I say that, Follis gives away possession, but wins it back again for her side. Turner, another crossfield ball, a vital touch actually from Franklin Freitschur. Galton would have been away again. It's a clever throw though to find Toon early. Back to Galton it goes. Galton gets the cross in once again though. Over hit. Didn't quite spot there, Galton, that Heath had made a run towards the near post and 
almost anticipated she'd be at the far post as she has been for a number of the crosses earlier in this game. Ewers under pressure. On to Hale, a bit loose though from the Aston Villa forward. Here's Leia Golton. Now Haley Ladd. Heath up against Seams. As Seams backing towards her own goal. Aston Villa have regrouped pretty well. He's looking for Ladd, who's onside. Seems with the block, and this is Sophie Hayward who can try and clear. Didn't really have a lot of support, though. There's one minute of additional time is announced by the PA inside the bank stadium. Chance here, though, for Manchester United to double their lead before the break. Ona Badia up against Franklin Freitur, who timed her tackle to perfection. Dangerous delivery and bravely punched clear by Lisa Weiss. This is Staniforth. Hooks it back in. Too much on that, though. And that might be the last action of the first half, too. First half that I'm sure, despite being behind, Gemma Davis will pick a lot of positives from. Her side have looked very good at times in possession. But it's Lair Golton's goal that has Manchester United ahead going into the break. The league leaders taking the lead through the 26-year-old. Lauren James has had chances. Alatoon's had chances. Manchester United's press has forced opportunities, but Aston Villa have looked pretty menacing themselves going forward. Hales has had a couple of opportunities on the break for the home side. And it's still pretty well poised for the second half. Aston Villa nil, Manchester United 1. <laughs> 